There are two major cowboy influences in the West, California and Texas. The Californios followed in the footsteps of the Spanish vaqueros who lived in California. Texas traditions evolved from the Texas vaqueros as well as from the stock keepers who migrated from South Carolina. This merger created the Texas Cowboy. Howdy folks, welcome back to the channel. In this episode, I wanna to talk to you guys about the cowboy of the Southwest and generally of the South, the cow puncher. And so, without further ado, let's jump in to this video. All right, so first things first, we're gonna talk about cowpuncher clothing. So cowpunchers generally wear taco hats, so the brims of their hats are turned up like that. And cowpunchers also tend to have stove top boots, basically boots that ride almost all the way up to their knees. This differentiates them from other styles of cowboy clothing. And in general, they just wear long sleeves and jeans like every other cowboy. Next we have livestock and horseback riding practices. So cow punchers, they tend to do this thing with a tie on. So when they're branding or roping, their rope is actually tied on to their horn. And also when they're branding, they tend to focus on just healing the calves and not necessarily doing heading and healing. Listen to what my friends over at Elliston Equine Solutions have to say about this. Tie on versus dally. You know, I got this short horn. You know, this is kind of a Texas style saddle. It's some big swells. It's on a Will James tree. Uh, old strip down secret egg. And, uh, really short horn. It's not real conducive for dallying, but you know, I, I have dallied on it. You can dally on it. It's just, you know, to me, I I don't like losing my rope when I'm when I'm barreling down after a fast calf and. I want to know once I got it that I got it and I can get the job done. So I, I tie on out in the pasture uh, with a lot of them smaller calves and everything, and this is how I do it. The difference between tie on and dally, if you dally in and you get in a bind, you can just let her go most of the time and it won't catch. So then you can get out of there before there's a wreck. And with tying on, you're kind of stuck to it. You know, uh, there's an old saying, you know, uh, for you old hard and fast, Hard and fast dillies, you, uh, you rope it and it's yours or your it's. I've chased a lot of ropes for people in dallies. <laughs> well, everybody here ties on. And when we're roping in the crail, branding, or doing anything while we tie on. When you go to catch something and tie on, you're, you intend to go get them. Guys dally, they're not really committed, I don't think. And I always tease them. I say, yeah, you dally guys. Get out there and catch something, and if things come pretty tight, everything's not just right, and looks like not going to work out real good, you just turn your little rope loose. I said, y'all ain't got no good stories to tell. <laughs> the reason why cow punchers say that they tie on is because in rough brush country, it's way harder to hold the dally if that cow is running into the brush. They would rather have both hands free to kind of move that brush away. And I get that from an article on Western Horsemen. Next, we're gonna talk about the location of cow punchers. So first up, we have the great state of Louisiana. Next, we have New Mexico. Then we have Texas. Pepper, spear, weight, quality, Bread, unbred, on the heifers, the steers will be based on weight and quality. Heifer, steer. The ones that are not good enough to reproduce get to be steers. Unfortunately, it's not that way in humans. Next, Arizona. And finally, Oklahoma. And these are rough brush country with lots of cactus and hot sun. Finally, we're gonna talk about cowpuncher equipment. So to start off, cowpunchers tend to use swell fork saddles. That's because they like to have something blocking them when they are on a bucking horse. 
and also cow punchers like to ride in split reins this way they can get off of their horse and still have one rein attached to the horse and one rein off and also from an article in western horsemen cow punchers like to use small tapaderos oxbows or even square bottom stirrups and for shaps they like to use bat wing or shotgun shaps so in the desert they tend to use bat wings and in colder climates they like the shotguns because they don't want the wind getting into their pants and finally cow punchers tend to use 35 to 40 foot ropes that's because they don't want super long ropes getting caught in their rough brush country there's so many unwritten rules like where this fire is here and the chuck box is right there it's against the rules of walk in between the fire and the chuck box you never sit on someone else's bed roll unless you ask them first at a meal i'll tell the wagon boss that it's ready and he'll tell the guys it's ready and they'll usually let him go in first they'll give you a shapin if you where your legging doesn't fly. Shapping is the way that cowboys enforce rules. If you get lost on the drive or you do something wrong, at the end of the day, somebody will remember it. They'll take you down. You always have to have the fringe pointed towards your feet. If you hit them and that fringe goes up above their belt, well then the man running the leggings, he gets a shapping also. There's a rush or a hurry in this country that you don't see out there. And a lot of it, I believe, is to beat the heat because we have a lot of hot weather here quite a bit of the year. It's not very conducive to working cattle.